Well, President of Iceland, Your Excellencies uh, and colleagues from all over the world, uh, this is a session about uh, Arctic melt or melting in the Arctic. We have heard about uh, the sea ice. I am going to focus on land-based ice in Alaska, uh, the US uh, uh, and Western Canada, Arctic Canada, also along, uh, on the periphery of the Greenland, uh, the Russian Arctic, Svalbard, Iceland and Scandinavia, and also on, uh, uh, on the Greenland ice sheet itself. Uh, we distinguish between, uh, in the literature, uh, glaciers and ice caps. Uh, as number one, and the second ice sheets. And the biggest of all ice sheets is, is of course, in Antarctica. But here in the north, we have the Greenland ice sheet. Uh, Two-thirds of the mass of the, of the entire glaciers and ice caps are located here in the Arctic. And out of the 41.41 uh, uh, meters of sea level rise, if all the glaciers and ice uh, caps melt, 26 uh, centimeters are located here in the Arctic. Uh, In the report uh, from IPCC, which was released uh, a few weeks ago, we can see that the glaciers uh, and ice caps have been uh, contributing 80% of the total loss of glaciers in all ice in, on, the, on the globe. Only 20% have been from the ice sheets, which are Antarctica and Greenland. And what the, the glaciers are doing is shown here on this. Sorry, you need to Sorry, speak to I the have to. Okay. Sorry for that. What the glaciers are doing um, is uh, uh, so the contribution is increasing at a fast rate, as shown here. And um, and from 0.6 meters in the 71 to, to 2009 up to 0.75 and 0.83, the latest ones. And this is for the entire world of glaciers and ice, ice caps. And two-thirds of this are from the Arctic glaciers. 170 out of 259 come from the Arctic glaciers. If we look at... Uh, the ice cap, the only one, ice sheet, the only one which is in the Arctic, is the Greenland. And there has been a dramatic increase in the contribution from Greenland to sea level rise from almost nothing in the 92 uh, to 2001 up to almost 0.6 meters now in, most recently. And half of the contribution is from surface melt, which is increasing. Uh, rapidly, and the other half is from carving glaciers, which are moving at a more rapid rate into the, <laughs> or draining the ice directly into the ocean. So this is the situation, and if we look at this um, uh, upper graph here, we can see that the, uh, and where they show the contribution from from glaciers, as I'd call them, and from the two ice sheets. The main contribution, the uppermost graph here, is the contribution from the glaciers, because they have reacted already, and, uh, and their contribution in the, in the table here, from, 2000, uh, from 93 to 2010, has been 76 centimeters uh, uh, contribution to increased sea level. Uh, Greenland has only been 0.33, and Antarctica also of the same order. For, uh, and this is fortunate, because uh, as you know, 
the potential for Greenland would be seven meters and Antarctica 58. So, and then of the 0.76 uh, centimeters, no, no point millimeters per, per year. Well, uh, point 0.5 are from the Arctic glaciers. So they, they are the, they are so far the main contributors. These Arctic ice. Uh, glaciers and ice caps to the sea level rise. The rest is in Himalaya and the southern Andes, as you know. But anyway, then about the future, uh, the projections are as follows for the Arctic glaciers and ice caps. Uh, they, they might, if, if we are looking, or if the future is uh, two degrees warming before the end of the century, which, is, uh, which means that everyone does something about this, then the ice uh, glaciers in the Arctic will have been reduced by up to 55%. Uh, but if we do nothing, and it's business as usual, then uh, with seven, four to seven degrees warming, uh, then uh, it will be reduced down to 85% of what it is now. Those are the uh, scenarios, 2.6, the 2 degrees, and the 8.5, which, which are discussed in the, in the IPCC report. And um, there are several others, but th those are uh, uh, two of them. And then for the Greenland, the prediction is that in the, before the end of the century, there will be five centimeters contribution to increased sea level. But what is, what is another point is that at that time, uh, climate will have warmed Greenland up uh, to, to, to such an extent that there will be a, uh, exceeding a threshold or tipping point, as was mentioned by someone here, and then it will start to melt, and over the next thousand years, it may also almost disappear. So this is the uh, but uh, but I, I will I have to point out that there are many gaps. Uh, the report, the uh, IPCC report, is uh, um, is uh, an agreement uh, among scientists. And, uh, but um, glaciologists are always pointing out that we need more information about the volume of the ice mass uh, to do better pro projections of the mass balance. We need to understand better the re response of glaciers. For example, the Greenland increased the melting rate was a surprise to, for all scientists. Um, it was almost nothing uh, 20 years ago, and now it's uh, rising rapidly. We need better un understanding about the amplification of albedo change, the feedback mechanisms, and then um, and the thresholds, as I mentioned. Uh, when some threshold is exceeded, something happens which we don't know. Of. And this, is, uh, this may be irre irreversible. And we need better understanding of the dynamic or the stability of the glaciers, how the uh, how the meltwater is lubricating the bay so they are moving faster into the ocean. And we need better understanding of the ice-ocean uh, interaction when the sea is warming and the glacier is uh, moving into the sea, what is going on. And I would like to just repeat that uh, the IPCC report is very cautious. They are very, very careful. They, they even vote on this, I mean, <laughs> uh, I, I'm sure. And you should be open for surprises in the cryosphere in the future. And then I would like just to end with some details about uh, the situation here in Iceland since you are visiting us. Uh, just because time is short, look at the upper one. Here you can see the, the loss accumulated loss of ice on our ice caps. This is the time scale from 95, and you can see that it's going down towards me where I'm standing, and they are losing on the average uh, up to 20 meters evenly distributed over the entire ice masses. 
And this is the, this is the situation in Iceland. And the, I will not spend time on, so, the, so there's a loss, and this is just typical, or the same story all over. Uh, and what about the future? We've been working on this for, for many, many years. And here in the upper corner, uh, you, you can see um, one scenario, which is this uh, two degrees in, uh, warming before the end of the century. And if we uh, use that for prediction of the future of glaciers in Iceland, and I repeat that f for hope, if you are hoping for two degrees, you have to start to do something because uh, otherwise it will be much worse. Then our prediction is that the glaciers in, uh, in Iceland will disappear in 150 to 200 years, and they are as shown in the, in the lowermost part of the graphs. We will have increased the shards in our rivers uh, towards the end of the century, and then it will drop down, and after that we will have left with pre precipitation, a storage of 20 years of, of precipitation stored in our glaciers will be used up. And then, I'm just, uh, if I have, if I have, what is, well, the technique is always, oh, okay, oh, so this was just the warming. But now, now you can see uh, uh, how we can expect our glaciers to, what is this? Okay. You can see the year 2012, and you look at two of our ice masses, how we are predicting that they will disappear. We know the topography, we, we know the geography of them, we know the mass balance, we have mass balance models, and there's a lot of work behind this, so this is not only speculation. And, but given the scenario, this will be the future. And that was uh, also, maybe I should just, this is the present day Iceland which you are visiting, but uh, this, is, this may be the future. See how they are. Iceland without any ice. Thank you. <laughs>